All right, it's dinner time, guys. Uh, we got steak and Brussels sprouts going. You guys have already seen how I make my perfectly cooked steaks. Um, I'm gonna show you guys a simple recipe that is not only healthy, but delicious for Brussels sprouts. Um, what you need is Brussels sprouts, about six slices of bacon per, how much is this? Pound? Yeah, I think pound. Yeah, six slices of bacon per two pounds. So three slices of bacon per pound um, of Brussels sprouts. You need some honey and salt and pepper. We're going to take our bacon and we're going to cut it up into small chunks. I'm doing three pounds of Brussels sprouts, so I'm going to need nine pieces of bacon. So we're gonna cook our bacon. I'm gonna use a wok just because it makes it easier to flip. Uh, while we're doing that, we're also gonna have the oven preheating at 400. And we're gonna cut our Brussels sprouts just straight down the middle. without cutting ourselves. And we're gonna leave them like that and we're gonna throw them in the bowl. Maybe a cutting board would be easier. Yeah. <laughs> so you don't cut yourself. Oh God. Getting a cutting board. So here's the bacon. There's a little glass one. Oh, it was up there. Up where? Oh. And bristle sprouts. Mm. Let me see. Cutting plate. Oh, cutting plate. You're doing it in half the long way, or? Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay, I changed my mind. Um, I'm gonna do. I'm gonna add the steaks to the video. These guys are American grade uh, A one to A two um, Wagyu beef. So this guy's a. Um, these two are ribeyes, and this guy right here is a New York strip. They run about $20 a pound, but they, unless, unless your favorite restaurant is getting um, A5 Wagyu imported directly from Japan, you're never gonna find a more tender, more tender steak anywhere. And that includes Omaha or any of the other steak companies that are out there that'll mail stuff to you. And the kicker is, is that these guys are at Walmart, hidden inside with the organic section. They have the, the organic cow meat, whatever that is. I, I guess uh, everywhere else it's lab grown or something. Um, but it's hidden in there and it's uh, it's Wagyu. And I mean, just take a good look at the marbleization here compared to a, a like a USDA prime ribeye. 
it is insane. And these guys, if you cook them right, um, you don't even need a knife to cut them. You just cut them with a fork. Um, you can. I've seen people cook them in toaster ovens. I've seen all sorts of crazy stuff. I am going to cook them in uh, on a cast iron skillet at really high heat. But I'm going to cheat. I'm going to throw some tenderizer on there and I'm going to try out this new seasoning I bought. Um, but the tenderizer, I'm going to try and bring it up to that A5 level of tenderness. Um, tenders, these guys make some amazing seasoning. If you see them out there, they're on the shelves at Walmart and Sam's Club. Uh, this buttery steakhouse is amazing. I think that one's my favorite. Yep. I bought uh, some tequila lime seasoning for my uh, chicken. But uh, this one is my favorite. I'm kind of in the mood for something sweeter though. So I have this um, brown sugar with, the, and it's got a hint of bourbon flavor to it that we're gonna put on there. So we're just gonna take our store-bought tenderizer, sprinkle a little bit on each side, on all of them. We've got about 30 minutes before um, the Brussels sprouts are ready to go in the oven, so it works out perfectly because the steaks are, you know, once the Brussels sprouts go in the oven, I think they'll be 10, maybe 15 minutes, and these steaks are gonna go, they're gonna go quick. We're just gonna kinda sear them on high heat, and then for the ladies who like their steaks cooked more well done and not still mooing, um, we're gonna go ahead and throw those in the oven with the Brussels sprouts. But I got, the tenderizer on there, and I'm going to overload seasoning. Everybody says a good steak should be cooked or eaten with salt and pepper, and that's it. I don't know. I like to see if I can uh, enhance the flavor, so I like messing around with different seasonings. Nobody believes me, but there's a Jack Daniels Mesquite seasoning in a bag that you can get at Walmart. I invented it, and one of the friends, one of uh, probably my roommate, is the one that gave up the recipe because I've been making that same. It tastes exactly the same, <laughs> but nobody believes me. It's one of my my fish stories. Okay. We've got them marinated. I'm actually going to cover them up and leave them on the counter and keep them at room temperature. Wagyu is a steak that you do not, absolutely do not want to cook um, cold. It needs to sit at room temperature for that, um, the fat to really melt down and permeate the meat. So, see you guys then. I got a little bit, a um, little bit more time on the bacon. I want it just. I don't want it to be overcooked. Just a little bit crispy. And then once that's done, we can move on to the next step. Okay, my bacon's ready. And this is a fun part where I make it unhealthy. I'm gonna take my bacon, and I'm not gonna use all this. This is a lot of grease, but. I'm just going to use a little bit, maybe two tablespoons or so of it, two, three tablespoons of it. I'm going to give it a quick toss. Now my Brussels sprouts. And because I'm using bacon grease instead of olive oil, I'm not going to put salt on these. But I will do some black pepper if I can find it.
All right, these guys are ready. I'm gonna drain out my bacon and then I've drained all the most of the grease out of my bacon. And I'll scoop it in. Give it one last toss. And then we're gonna gently spread it out on a tray. Oh man, I was about to say we made, managed to not make a mess and then I dropped the breast of sprouts. Okay. We're gonna try and spread these out as much as possible. We're gonna throw them in the oven. 400. Oh man. We have a runaway. I'm actually gonna drop the temperature down to 375 because I'm cooking some. I'm gonna make some croissants as well. Um, Could I grab it without burning myself? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. And uh, we're gonna just let these cook until we start seeing crispy, crispy golden brownness all over them. All right, now well, let's find my cast iron skillet. It's time to get those steaks going. Hopefully I don't run out of counter space. I'm going to put my pan on high for now and I'm going to wait about 10 minutes to let my pan heat up because it's a cast iron skillet and it takes forever to heat up and I don't want my food to be cooked uh, unevenly. So see you guys in 10 minutes. I got my croissants and it exploded on me. This is like the adult version of a jack-in-the-box, these Pillsbury pans. I forgot to spray my pan. Okay. How do we do this? We gotta unroll it. What flavor was that one? This one is the sweet Hawaiian bread one. I love King of Hawaiian rolls, so I figured I'd try it out. And then we tear it at the dotted line. Roll them back up. Make like a little horseshoe shape. This croissant, the way the batter comes, or the way it comes out, is one of the many things, well, probably one of the few things in the cooking world that absolutely vexes me. I don't understand how they can make the flaky, layery, delicious goodness. And it bothers me because I want to be able to make them. So if anybody knows how to make croissants better than these uh, free, free uh, tubes of the Pillsbury ones. Let me know and teach me your ways.
right, let's check on the Brussels sprouts. They're getting there. By the time the croissants and the steaks are done, they'll be ready. So, I'll throw my croissants in there. Got it at 375. I'll start off with 10 minutes. Start the timer. I got my pan at fairly high heat. Why is it not opening? Okay. I got a broken cup. <laughs> um, I want to put a little bit of cooking oil in here. Find my pictures. Get that nice and even coating. And I'm going to wait until I start seeing little bits of fumes come up and get that oil all the way up to its smoking point. All right, with the cast iron skillet preheated and all that, it should only take a few seconds. But once I start seeing that smoke, I know they'll all sizzle as soon as I put them on. I'll get a nice sear going. So I got my oil to its smoking point. And that's the sound you want to hear. Turn it up. So we're going to do a couple minutes on each side. We're looking for that nice caramelization and a perfectly seared steak. So yeah. Melted, I'm just going to start scooping the sauce, keeping that butter on top. Your break. <laughs> yeah. Can't have steak without beer. And let it rest. 
unlike the other two cooks. I got 15 seconds left on the timer. This steak does not, this one does not want to caramelize very well, but the other two look absolutely amazing. I put them under there to rest and keep them warm. Croissants are done. Oh, let me grab pot holders. Sorry, slacking on my part. Bloop, bloop. This guy can go under there. And last part. Ooh, Brussels sprouts. Oh shoot, more pot holders. Damn it. <laughs> oh, grab more pot holders. Um, sprouts might have to move to oh, the table. Oh, table? Okay. Run to the right. table. <laughs> we need a bigger kitchen. You guys need to help us make a, get a bigger kitchen. Right. Pull that over. Okay. And the last part of the Brussels sprouts. Yum. It smells so good. Oh, last part. It's honey. Make sure you get a good light drizzle on them. I'm trying to get them all, but my our honey is like solidifying. Okay. Oh, back over here. Now, to show off that amazing steak. Piece of wagyu. And a knife. Perfect medium rare. Deliciously tender steak. Mm. The steak itself is just so tender, it like kind of melts in your mouth. It's like to die for. And it's got not only the butter that we use, but just the the fat gives it kind of a buttery flavor. That's why the Wagyu is so sought after. I uh, I made one of my friends cry <laughs> showing this to him. All right, you guys. Well, that's our dinner. Um, it took us about two hours, but that was. Because the preparations of all the video and everything, if um, 
normally when I do this kind of spread, it only takes about 30 minutes. Um, the Brussels sprouts we've had before, they are amazing. They're kind of sweet and salty mix, almost like a sea salt caramel. And we got the croissants and the steak. The Wagyu steak, like I said before, you can find it at Walmart. It's hidden in the organic stuff. It is, um, this guy right here, this ribeye was $22. But it is worth every penny. And hopefully one day, eventually, and if it does happen, you guys will definitely be able to see and uh, there'll be plenty of videos on it. But hopefully one day, Brittany will let me buy a, <laughs> um, a, uh, a full, uncut uh, A5 actual authentic Japanese uh, Wagyu so I can dry age it because uh, every year I normally dry age uh, a prime rib and cut it into steaks for Christmas and uh, kind of give out the steaks to family members and all that and they usually turn out amazing. She says that she doesn't like me sneaking up the kitchen because it makes the whole house smell like it when you get to that 60 day mark it um, does <laughs> but it's amazing um, this Walmart Wagyu is just about as tender as a 60 day USDA choice 60 day aged USDA choice steak so if you don't want to wait the whole 60 days just go buy a Wagyu because um, when uh, the bottom the bottom line is is that a um, Authentic Japanese Wagyu A5 Wagyu, which is the highest rank beef you can get in the world, goes for between $25 and $75 an ounce, depending on which province of Japan it came from. Um, so when you add that up to an 8 ounce steak, you're looking at three to $500 for an 8 ounce steak. A 60-age USDA choice cut um, ribeye usually runs between $15 and $25 an ounce. So you're costing this, you're you're spending about the same, but there's a lot of time that goes into it. But the Wagyu blows the blows the dry age out of the water, and I'm so excited to be able to try. Eventually, um, I might just buy it and ask for forgiveness. <laughs> but. Um, a, uh, it's twelve hundred and or it's yeah one thousand two hundred five hundred dollars for oh my gosh a, absolutely not um, for a ten pound bone in um, a five white you absolutely rib. not <laughs> I'm gonna do it I'm gonna win a scratch off or something like that and I'm not gonna tell her about it I'm just gonna order the white you and she's <laughs> It's going to be like, where'd you get the money for this? And I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> but it's the best steak in the world. i got to do it. I'm a vegetarian. But yep, that's our dinner. That's our little little feast, Saturday night feast. So thank you guys for watching. I hope you guys try it out. I hope you guys really get to try at least the American Wagyu. It is something that on, that is has to be on everybody's bucket list to at least try once. So thanks for watching. Make sure you guys like, subscribe, and we'll see you guys next time. All right, I made my plate. Now I get to dig in. I'm so excited. Yum.